From a great morning run to an incredible Gulf sunset, there is just something about the beach that can absolutely change the way that you live. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about it. And as a matter of fact, this very beach, a little over five and a half years ago, is the reason that my wife Kate and I decided to pack up our family of five, sell almost everything we own, and travel 1,200 miles south here to the Tampa Bay area, and have been loving it ever since. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here in this beautiful, beautiful sunshine state. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a tour of five beach communities here in the Tampa Bay area that have the potential to maybe steal your heart like it did ours, um, in the hopes of giving you some idea of what it's like to live here on a day-in, day-out basis. Because people see this and they go, okay, that's vacation for a lot of people, but how can we make that reality for us? And that's a decision we were faced with as well, but we had to go to work trying to figure that out. And I gotta be honest with you, it was a very scary endeavor, but five and a half years later, it turns out it was one of the best decisions. As a matter of fact, it was the best decision we ever decided to make. And in today's video, I'm gonna share what it's like to live here in this incredible Tampa Bay area. All right, so let's take you to one of America's most popular beaches first. Let's start in Clearwater Beach. And this beach is no stranger to visitors, has approximately four and a half million people who come and take advantage of what Clearwater has to offer. It's been ranked as America's best beach, along with a few others in the area we're gonna talk about today as well. So make sure you stay tuned for those. But Clearwater Beach is known as a sun worshiper and beach lovers destination. I mean, you've got everything from shopping and dining. You've got the Clearwater Aquarium right there uh, just off the beach. There are all kinds of things to plug into. You can do a sunset cruise. You can do a pirate cruise if you want. You can, of course, go parasailing. You can rent jet skis. Uh, you can just lounge on the beach. There are activities there as well. There's a giant slide and like this bouncy house things for the kids. It's awesome. You go out on pier. 60 you know there'll be pelicans hanging out there with you and the water is crystal clear and that's how this beach has gotten its name you know you will find great wildlife out there from time to time as well you'll see manatees you may see um, rays out there it is a really really excellent time the beach itself is set up to take in a lot of people there there are volleyball courses a great walking path and of course all the dining and entertainment you could ever plug into and those are just a few things to name when you're living on the beach that may not be the only reason you want to live in Clearwater Beach you know maybe you're someone who wants something a little bit more laid back if you go up to the north end of Clearwater there are residential areas up there with single-family houses that you can plug into you know along with the um, beachfront living condo living you know with all the amenities you could ever ask for as well now what does it cost to buy a home in Clearwater Beach well that's a different conversation the average single family home that is sold in Clearwater Beach over the last 30 days was a 2,189 square foot, three bedroom, two bath, and it sold at approximately $1.7 million. That is a very large number. And right now, listings out there range anywhere from the 650,000 mark all the way up to 2.7 million. And we've seen $40 million listings out there as well. Didn't sell for that number, but you can see that out there too. Obviously, this is a beautiful area to try to purchase a home. Now the average condo that sold was a two bedroom, two bath, 1,269 square foot home. And that'll set you back right about $1.35 million. So again, not a cheap endeavor to live on the beach, but just as many coastal areas are, especially the highly desirable ones, it's not going to be an inexpensive property if you're trying to live right on the Gulf of Mexico. We're gonna head about 20 miles south here to St. Pete Beach, which is another beach that has been recognized as the number one beach in America, which is awesome, y'all. We are spoiled rotten here, and if you've never been to St. Pete Beach before, you're in for a treat, because this area is incredible. Again, white sugar sand beaches, stunning, gorgeous beach. The sunsets are unbelievable. Laid back lifestyle, people love coming to this area. There is dining, shopping galore. You can go down to the historic Passa Grill district there and there's all kinds of shop as a matter of fact our accountants there <laughs> um, you know and you've got everything you need you got great restaurants I mean I could go I could name them individually for days we have been eating up and down Pinellas County for almost six years and I still haven't discovered everything there is to discover and um, it is in another area that just has so much to offer there are single-family homes and condos just like we discussed before bars restaurants shops local shops that I, I'm a huge fan of um, one of the dog beaches is down 
down in that area, you can head down to Pass a Grill. And then the dog beach is there. You can head over to Fort DeSoto. You've got a dog beach in Fort DeSoto, if that's important to you guys. And then if you've never seen the Don Cesaro Hotel, the the pink lady is just unbelievable. This hotel is iconic, man. It's gorgeous and um, go have dinner there. Uh, stay, when you come into town, I absolutely recommend staying at the Don Cesar, but if you can't, if that's not in your purview, it doesn't fit your budget, go have dinner. You will not be disappointed. Now the next beach on our list is the one where we started today and that is our home beach, none other than Indian Rocks. And um, this is one of my favorite places on the planet. This beach has stole our heart. This is the reason why we moved to Tampa Bay a little over five and a half years ago. We thought for years we were going to live in the Jensen Beach, Port St. Lucie area. My wife and I, you know, we've been traveling there for almost a decade. Her father has lived on the Atlantic coast um, for, for almost 25 years. And we got married in Hope Sound, you know, hung out in Jensen Beach, thought we might live in Stewart. And when we stepped foot on Indian Rocks Beach, it really changed our lives for y'all. Like the sand and the white sugar sand and the sunset. Oh my God, a Gulf, a Gulf Coast sunset is like no other. And it just, it, it captured us. We had to have it after that. We went to work trying to figure it out. And the community is awesome in its own unique way. You know, when it comes to Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach, both of those beaches are very busy. Um, they are visited by a lot of tourists. And for some people, they love being in the action. But for Kate and I and our family, we were looking for something a little bit more laid back. And Indian Rocks really gave us what we were looking for. There's no public parking structure there, which can be a little bit of a challenge from time to time. But once you learn how to navigate the area, it, you recognize what a benefit it is. Because while we do get busy in season, and, and season for those of you who aren't aware, that's when all of the snowbirds and the kids vacationing and spring break and all that stuff is happening. And really it takes place from after the holidays to about Easter. It gets busy, the entire region grows. You know, people have second homes here, they're vacationing here as you're well aware. And it, it does drive a lot of traffic. But for us, we don't have a public parking structure and we don't have high rise condo developments and or high rise uh, uh, hotels. And it really keeps a lot of that pressure off. Out on Gulf Boulevard, we only have a two lane road there where, you know, areas like Clearwater, St. Pete Beach, you know, uh, Reddington Beach to the south, there are four lanes and even a turn lane in some areas. And of course there's going to be more traffic when you have that. So. It's not better or worse, it's just different. And for us, we were looking for something a little bit more laid back, old Florida, kind of. That doesn't really exist anymore, so that's why I'm, I'm sharing that. But it is a slower pace compared to those other two beaches. Um, we've got great restaurants on the beach here. One of my favorite places to go grab a, a piece of pizza is Slice. That's awesome if you've never been there before. Head over to Anecdote Brewing. I love their IRB IPA, one of my all-time favorites. If you're looking for a great cup of coffee or a, a really good spot for pastries, you've got um, uh, the, the Grove uh, Cafe that just opened. That place is awesome. I actually been going there about two or three times a week. Um, they've got these wonderful pa pastries. And then if you go across the street, you've got uh, Cafe de Paris, just a, a, a few more blocks north. And that place is outstanding as well. Again, excellent pastries. They've even got great quiche in there. So I know I can go tangent on, on restaurants and uh, Indian Rocks, but it's really laid back. And we also have access to a Publix grocery store right around the corner. Um, and it's just a really, really good fit for people who want to just kind of hang, right? And, and just be laid back and enjoy what the Gulf Coast has to offer. Indian Rocks is outstanding. Now, if you're looking to pick up a single family home here in Indian Rocks Beach, the average home that has sold over the last 30 days was a four bedroom, four bath, 2,400 square feet and sold for approximately $1.5 million. It's just a little bit less than that. But buying coastal real estate on the Gulf of Mexico, it's not an inexpensive endeavor, so keep that in mind. Um, but you can find things cheaper also. The range right now is somewhere in that $750,000 mark all the way up to about 2.25. Can grow from there for sure. We've had a $10 million sale there in Indian Rocks Beach, but um, you're gonna be in that price range looking for a three bedroom or a two bedroom home. You, again, you can find a four bedroom as well. Next, we're gonna head back south to Treasure Island. This is another outstanding beach. It's, you know, really bookend between uh, Madeira Beach and St. Pete Beach. It, it's a really cool spot. When you go down to the beach there, they have a giant slide, a pirate ship, a bounce 
bouncy house. They got stuff to keep the kids active. This beach is a little bit deeper and I think it's really cool. You've got a public parking spot, easy to park there. Um, there's a pay by app situation there. So you do have to pay for your parking. There's a clean bathroom, which I love. You can rent paddle boards there, outstanding. I love that also. And then um, as you walk out to the beach, they've got like this blue walkway. So um, if someone is uh, needs handicap assistance, they can they can get out a little bit further, say they're in a wheelchair or something like that. It just makes walking out that far a lot easier. So it's a deeper beach, but again, gives you a lot of access there. You can rent, you know, chairs, cabanas, paddle boards, like I discussed before. Just behind it, you've got a Publix grocery store if you're not familiar with that. Again, shops, restaurants, everything at your fingertips there. And you're not far from John's Pass. So like, y'all, there's so much to plug into when you're on the Gulf Coast here. I, again, we got 27 and a half miles of these gorgeous white sugar sand beaches. And you really have to kind of figure out which beach is your favorite. You know, some of them are really busy. Some of them aren't as busy. Um, some of them offer different types of restaurants around it and different types of nightlife. And that is super important to people. You know, the, the surrounding communities directly behind um, Treasure Island here, you've got a lot of single family residents that gives you access to the intercoastal waterway, which is important because if you're a boater, you can get a boat slip and, and have that opportunity. You know, you can do that in Indian Rocks Beach as well. You can do that in Clearwater Beach and you can do that in St. Pete Beach, but there are more opportunities in Treasure Island than there are in Indian Rocks Beach to have a boat slip. So these things, kind of, you know, if they're important to you, make sure you're asking good questions. Depends on how big the boat is. You know, are you gonna have a hoist in your backyard? is the uh, intercoastal deep enough for your for your vessel lots of things that have to be answered so make sure you're asking great questions when you start digging in these communities but my recommendation is come into town live like a local man come you know what is it that's drawing you down here what is it you're you're looking for exactly do you want to be right on the Gulf of Mexico you know are you looking for a condo or, or um, a townhome type of, of living. Uh, do you want to have access to St. Pete? You know, how, how important is that? How close do you need to be to the airport? You know, it really, here's another really cool thing. Most of our beaches are about 45 minutes away from Tampa International Airport, which is outstanding. We also have the uh, Clearwater St. Pete Airport, which is uh, the, the airport code is PI, P-I-E, um, Tampa's TPA. And that has flights, you know, Allegiant and Southwest fly in, and there, there's definitely other uh, air, airlines that fly in there too, but that gets you much closer, right? From Indian Rocks Beach, as an example, or Clearwater Beach to Clearwater Airport there, um, you're talking about 20 minutes. So. It really just depends on what your lifestyle is and what you're trying to accomplish. The next beach on our list today is Siesta Key Beach, another beach that has been recognized as the number one beach in America. I know you're like, Juan, how many number ones can there be? Well, they are awarded these on an annual basis, just so you guys know. So it wasn't all in the same year, but this is a great award. And Siesta Key deserves this. It is absolutely one of the best beaches in this country. It is most certainly one of the best beaches in all of Tampa Bay and Sarasota, hands down. Um, it is incredible. The, the type of lifestyle here is amazing. Um, luxury, if you will. Uh, it definitely has a different feel than Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach. You know, it's about 45 or 50 minutes south there, um, you know, from St. Pete Beach, but it's more I would say more residential. It has that feel to it. Um, it definitely has its resorts and um, they're beautiful and stunning to themselves, but there's more single family homes that surround this beach than there are, are um, Clearwater Beach most certainly and St. Pete beaches as well. And they're just kind of laid out different. You've got um, more canals here, um, uh, more access to the Gulf of Mexico for those single family homes and those condos than you would in a St. Pete beach or a Clearwater. Uh, again, people will argue this, but it's, it's it's set up and it feels different. And, and again, for me to clearly articulate that, you really have to see it for your own eyes and feel it. Um, again, I'm not saying one is better than the other. They're just different lifestyles. This one may be more appropriate for you. I would consider this a little bit slower. Um, during season though, this is gonna be a very busy beach again, so keep that in mind. It's great be beach for shelling. You know, if you're into that, you can find some beautiful shells down there. You will always see incredible wildlife and birds. I love this beach, it's awesome. The white sugar sand, it keeps your feet from burning. That was something I forgot to mention earlier, but these beaches are great. You don't ever burn your feet on them because of the, the way the sand is. It's awesome. Um, you've got Siesta Key Village down here and some great restaurants, including the old Salty Dog, 
the Siesta Key Oyster Bar and Gilligan's, just to name a few. It's a great spot down there. And you know, it's not far away from St. Armand's Circle and Lido Key, if those things interest you as well. So lots to do. And, uh, and Sarasota as a whole has a tremendous amount of amenities. We've done lots of videos on Sarasota. You know, the University Town Center, that mall up there and, and, and the uh, all of the shops, I mean, it's second to none. That place is unbelievable. Um, you've got Pop Stroke over there. They're building an aquarium over there you've got you know the park over there where they do rowing and I mean there's all kinds of stuff that you can take advantage of Lakewood Ranch is not far away and I know we were talking about the beaches but I just want to share with you the the surrounding area so you can kind of understand um, you know how these things tie in together you know so uh, there's a lot of living uh, when it comes to these coastal towns and there's a there's a different lifestyle and a different town for everyone. So hopefully we shared with you five today that really kind of fit in your ideal lifestyle. Let's talk about what it actually costs to live here in Siesta Key though. Over the last 30 days, the average home that sold was a four bedroom, four bath, 2,700 square foot, and that sold for roughly 2.12 million. Definitely not a small number. And the current listings that are out there range from 800,000 to right around 4.4 million. And if you wanted to pick up a condo instead, those are our two bedroom, two bath, 1,550 square feet. And those are selling right around 1.16 million. So uh, definitely lots of different opportunities there to purchase homes or condos, townhomes, whatever you're looking at. There's a lot of great real estate when it comes to living in the entire Tampa Bay area. If you guys have more questions on that, do not hesitate to reach out to me and the team. We love serving you guys. And we've been so grateful. We've had over 250 Zoom calls with people just like you who are considering relocating or investing here in the, the Tampa Bay area and we are grateful to serve. All of my contact information is listed down below, including my calendar link where you can schedule one of those Zoom calls. I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of today's videos. Like I said, if you got any questions, put them in the comments below. Don't hesitate to reach out to me and the team. And as always, until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.